college versus university. What are the differences between the two? Uh, let me know if you can hear me. Let me know if the audio is working. I know that it looks like we're in a different location today because we are. We are in Mexico, you know, because it is the holiday season. We did decide to come visit some family. We have mentioned in the past that we are uh, from Mexico. So we are here visiting family because of the holiday season. Uh, so we will be out of the office, but not really just out of the uh, our set, our studio our office where we normally have these live streams for uh, the next couple of weeks, but it doesn't matter because work doesn't stop and we are here doing our live streams and we are still going to be filling your feed, filling, feed, feeding our uh, social media with helpful information that can help your student, that can help you prepare for the college application process. Uh, like today, today we're talking about colleges versus universities. We all get, always get questions about what the difference is between a college and a university. Uh, there's a lot of misconceptions. A lot of people think uh, because, you know, of the names that, you know, their a college is just either a community college and students cannot get, you know, uh, you know, certain degrees from them um, or, you know, there's a lot of misconceptions in general. So uh, today I will be, I guess, debunking those misconceptions, explaining the differences between the two and just giving you a little bit of more information on colleges and universities. I'm super excited. This is a really exciting, uh, you know, topic of conversation and hopefully it can help you and your students. As always, David is in the comment section uh, saying hello to everyone and, you know, monitoring the chat. If there are any questions, David will be answering your questions and he's just got, going to be in the chat answering your questions. And like he just said, please let us know, one, where you're joining from, two, if you're a parent or student, and three, uh, what grades are you or your student in? So if you're a parent, let us know where you're joining from. Uh, if you're a parent and what grade your student is in and vice versa if you're a student let us know all of this info just because you know we like to know where our students are coming from you know and we like to kind of gauge the audience because sometimes we happen to have more students than we have parents and sometimes it's a nice little mix sometimes we have only parents and it's just nice to have this uh presentations be very we like it i personally love when these presentations, these live streams are interactive. So make these live streams as interactive as possible. Ask questions, you know, let me know if you need anything. And, you know, we just had our live stream in Spanish in our Spanish uh, page. And it was really fun. David had a lot, a lot of uh, parents and students just tuning in and asking questions. I believe that it was a very successful and very entertaining and fun live stream to watch uh and you know just to be a part of because i was here in the room and it was just nice i was also answering questions in the chat uh, helping david out and i believe that when live streams are like that you know when people are asking questions it's you know better and it's more entertaining and i also believe that a lot of times parents and students have similar questions so maybe if you ask a question you will be helping another student or another parent because they had a similar question, right? Or vice versa, if they have a question, they can help you. All right, reminding everyone that today we are talking about colleges versus universities. And I just wanna make sure it looks like we are, it's working our um, live stream. It looks like we're connected and people can hear us. Don't forget to comment in the chat uh, where you are joining from. And yeah, why don't we split up, you know, college and university, I will give you a definition of each one and then we will look at them side by side and we will compare. I will also talk about examples and just personal experiences so that uh, this can be a very, you know, you can understand this better. Alrighty, so what is university? Okay, so as you can see in your screen, a university is an institution of higher learning authorized to grant academic degrees to both uh, for both an undergraduate division or a graduate division. All right. So this is basically what a university is on paper or the definition. Uh, it's a higher learning institution. Uh, usually there are four year universities, but the main thing about universities is that they can grant academic degrees for both undergraduate students and graduate divisions, right? So you can, at a university, you can get 
um, an undergraduate degree, so a bachelor's degree, or a graduate degree. Um, so this is uh, in generally what a university is, you know, the more general definition. Of course, uh, there are some, you know, more specific things that we can talk about. And as we go through the presentation, I will explain that. Uh, but that is what a university is. And at a university, uh, there are three types of degrees offered available to students. So uh, at a university there, uh, a student can receive an undergraduate degree, which is a bachelor's degree, right? Uh, a postgrad, which is a master's. So that is after the four years, not three. <laughs> I put three fingers up. Um, so a postgraduate degree, which is a master's degree and or a professional degree, which is a doctorate, right? Uh, so that is way beyond the bachelor's degree and postgrad. Um, that is another type of degree that students can receive at a university, okay? All right, so just going back, just to recap, a, a university is an institution of higher learning uh, where students can degree uh, two types of academic degrees. At, with one of them is the undergraduate division um, and another is the graduate division. My brother Francisco, he went to the University of North Carolina, which is a university. It's is a very big university in North Carolina. Chapel Hill, beautiful school. I, I love that school. I loved visiting because the campus was really big and beautiful. And I mean, I went to a college, which I will explain what colleges are, a private college called Mary's College in Poughkeepsie, New York. So, you know, when you step on campus in these two different types of institution, you can def definitely see a difference, right? I mean, um, just, you know, when you talk about size, you know, uh, obviously universities, and I will talk about these definitions in a little bit, you know, describe them, um, no, compare them side by side. But, you know, a university, when I visited my brother Francisco and a couple of friends who went to UF um, with the University of Florida, I saw, you know, the university was huge. The campus was big. There was a lot of students uh, compared to my college in New York, which was, you know, small to medium size. So the campus was still gorgeous. Um, but it wasn't as big of a student, you know, student body. It was smaller class sizes, uh, you know, less buildings, et cetera. So uh, definitely um, I, I loved the University of North Carolina, the campus, uh, but I also knew I was happy at Marist College because I liked, you know, smaller class sizes and just being, you know, more seeing less people on campus, I felt more comfortable, if that makes sense. So when choosing a university or a college, students need to really look at themselves and think, what is it that I like? You know, do I want to go to a huge school like a university, like the University of Central Florida, that is one of the biggest universities in the country, you know, uh, that has lots of uh, academic opportunities of, you know, uh, sports that has a big social campus life or do I, do I want to go to a smaller school that still has extracurriculars but where maybe I will feel uh you know l less of a number you know it all depends on perspective and what the student wants at the end of the day all right so I know that I just went into a little tangent but uh that is what universities are so now let's talk about colleges and let me fix my phone over here. All right, so that was the definition of universities. Let's talk about college. What is a college? And a lot of people do get confused on what a college is, uh, you know, because there's a lot of misconceptions. So what is a college? A college is an institution of higher learning that provides a general or liberal arts education rather than a technical or professional training. All right, so the key word here is liberal arts, right? A college of liberal arts, when you go to a, when you attend or if you visit a college, you will hear that word a lot, liberal arts, liberal arts. Uh, so that, I guess the biggest differences, difference between a college and a university is, uh, it's how general the degrees are or the education, right? Uh, my school, I went to Marist College and I studied uh, media studies and it was the College of Liberal Arts. Um, and by the way, there are two programs that two types of degrees that colleges offer, which uh, they're both undergraduate and there's a so associate's degrees, which is two years and bachelor's degree, which is a four year degree. Um, some colleges do provide postgraduate programs uh, like masters of one and two years, but usually 
at a college, you will mostly see bachelor's degree only, right? And that is one of the biggest differences is that a university, I, like we talked about earlier, you have the, uh, let me show you in the screen, the undergraduate degree, the postgrad uh, and the pro professional degrees, you know, the bachelor's, master's, doctorate. And at a college, a smaller college, you will see the associate's degree, uh, or the bachelor's degree, the four-year college. Of course, um, a lot of students and parents know uh, have heard of community colleges. Now, community colleges and regular colleges are not the same thing. Uh, community colleges, associate's degree. Um, you know, community colleges. A lot of a lot of students, what they do is they will do two years at a community college, and then they will transfer to either a university or a college to receive a bachelor's degree, their four-year undergraduate degree. Uh, so there, that's uh, a community college and a college like uh, Providence College, or the one I went to, Marist College, is not the same thing, okay? I just want to make that clear, because we do get that question a lot. Um, and it's, yeah, colleges and you know, private colleges are not the same thing as community colleges. So yeah, I went to a private college. My brother David also went to a private college called Marist College in Poughkeepsie, New York. And personally, I loved it. Um, it was, I think it was a perfect, no, I know it was the perfect school for me. Uh, we, you know, uh, like I said, it was a smaller school. There are some colleges that have you know, bigger campuses or that have, you know, the population, student population is a little higher, but generally college tend, colleges tend to have smaller class sizes, right? Um, and, you know, you saw it in, you know, there were still sports teams. As a matter of fact, my brother David uh, managed, managed to go to a, uh, he managed to receive a sports scholarship and athletic scholarship for swimming. He received eight thousand dollars a year to swim at Marist College. So there's that's another misconception that I was reading about the other day that people think that colleges don't have sports teams or that students cannot receive you know athletic scholarships at colleges, and that is not true. You know, colleges can still have you know uh, D1 divisions. The college that we went to had a D1 school, and they swim against other colleges and whether that were also in the D1 division. So. You know, uh, the differences lie more in the types of degrees that are offered at these types of universities or colleges. Um, and students can still receive a four year uh, bachelor's degree, uh, undergraduate degree at both colleges and universities. All right. Now I'm going to put these side by side because I really want to explain these. I guess I want you guys to see it in your screen and see the differences side by side. And I will go over them and explain them better so that you can understand the differences uh, between universities and colleges. And I do want to clarify some of these, uh, you know, might not apply, these differences might not apply to all colleges and universities. Uh, you know, there are universities that are smaller. There are colleges that are larger. There are universities, uh, I mean, colleges that might not have a lot of sports teams, uh, you know, and there are colleges that have a large number of, you know, teams, D1 schools, D2, et cetera. Uh, so don't think that this applies for every college and every university. I'm just talking about, I will be explaining it in a more general sense, okay? All right, so let's start with the key characteristics of universities and colleges. So the first thing we'll talk about which we have already covered, is uh, universities, they offer undergraduate, graduate, and doctorate slash professional degrees. Colleges, they offer undergraduate and sometimes, sometimes graduate degrees. You know, some colleges, do, they do have graduate degrees, they have master's, right? They have five-year prog programs, et cetera. Uh, but Usually the ones that will offer more, uh, you know, type of degrees or more programs are universities, right? Um, all right. Another difference is universities. They offer many majors, many, uh, you know, careers or, yeah, majors of study, right? Uh, and colleges have a more limited number of majors. And we kind of talked about this last week, uh, if you were here for our presentation on the difference between private and public universities, um, you know, uh, private colleges and universities, uh, you know, 
uh, universities offer more majors. So if you were to go into the university, we actually, David, went into uh, the University of North Carolina and he showed, you know, how many majors, uh, you know, this university offers for students compared to what Marist College did. Um, and Marist obviously has less majors, uh, undergraduate degrees than the University of North Carolina. But this doesn't mean that, you know, just because of that, you know, that the University of UNC has more majors, they offer more majors. It doesn't mean that, you know, the education is better at UNC uh, or, you know, any, if you compare any university to college, uh, sometimes colleges have, you know, they specialize more in one area. So that's why, you know, the funding and everything goes into having, you know, the degrees that they do offer, they really uh, concentrate and they put all that funding into those degrees. So it's more specialized, you know, and more concentrated into those degrees. Um, and that's why, you know, maybe at a college, there will be more a more limited number of majors offered than there would be at a university, right? But then again, there are some colleges that have a pretty, you know, uh, pretty numerous amount of uh majors, uh, offered majors for students, uh, but usually universities will have more majors, uh, more options for students uh, to major in something than a college will. All right, so another difference is universities. They may be private or they may be public uh, in college colleges as well. Uh, so <clears throat> as you can see, college, universe, oh, sorry, did some, okay. There you go. I'm back. <laughs> I think I lost my, my screen for a second. Uh, so yeah, uh, universities can be private or public, and so can colleges. Uh, so it's not really a difference. I guess it's a similarity. We're just looking at them side by side. Um, and another uh, you know, characteristic, key characteristic about a university, as I said earlier, is that uh, many there's many students per class at a university. So bigger student body, right? More students, you walk on campus, a university campus like UCF, UCLA, you know, big uh, class, you see a lot of people walking, you know, thousands of students. Um, colleges tend to have less students per class. You know, the university, I said it earlier, UC, UCF, University of Central Florida is one of the biggest universities in the nation, the United States. And, you know, uh, when you compare that to, you know, Providence College, uh, Loyola or something, you know, it's, it's, you can see a big difference in how many students there are at the campus compared to, you know, a large university. Uh, and another key characterist characteristic is, you know, sports teams. Universities can have more sports, tend to have more sports teams than colleges do. Uh, now, this is more in the general sense of, you know, the big sports like football and basketball, mostly football. Universities tend to have bigger programs uh, than colleges do. Uh, colleges do have uh, more elite type of sports. Uh, you know, David swam tennis teams at, uh, you know, colleges are also really good. So it all depends on the university, on the institution, but you will see that universities might have more sports teams, uh, might offer more sports teams or have more teams than a college. Now, this doesn't mean that colleges don't have any sports teams. It just means that universities will have, you know, lacrosse, basketball, uh, football, you know, soccer, you know, they will have 10 teams and colleges maybe will have their funding for like six you know, sports. They will still have D1 sports and D1 athletes and scholarships, but they might not have as many as universities will have, right? Alrighty. So final question, uh, you know, when looking at this is which one should you apply to? Which one should your student apply to? All right. So the first thing I want to say with this, you know, when answering this question that we do get a lot from a lot from students and parents is which college meets your students' academic interests, right? Which one, you know, has, let's say your student wants to major in, wants to study theater. What school has a good theater program, you know? What school has a theater scholarship, you know? What school has a good ranking of, like, you know, you can look at the rankings for school, for the school, for an ac academic program. Which schools, you know, have good programs, you know? Uh, you want to research that. Uh, you wouldn't want to go to a school that maybe is, 
ranked last in something that you're really passionate about, that you really want to learn. Um, or maybe let's say that your student wants to study, this is just an example, let's say your student wants to study uh, pre-med and their whole entire life, they're like, I really want to study pre-med. And they say, oh, I just want to go to this, uh, this is just an example, to Florida State University because all my friends are applying there. And then turns out that Florida State University doesn't even have a pre-med program. Again, this is an example. It's not a fact, um, but it's, it's just an example. And we do see that a lot where parents or students, you know, uh, influence each other and they they say this school looks really good. But then maybe that school that they are, you know, that it's just popular or maybe a friend's friend went there and they're having fun. You know, at the end of the day, it's not the friend's decision. It's not the parent's decision. It's the student's decision. Which school has the academic interest that the student is interested in studying. Um, I hope that made sense. All right, so another thing to consider is uh, which what school satisfies the financial need of your home, right? Uh, as I said earlier, uh, yes, maybe a school has, you know, the right programs for you or your child, the right academic program, but you do have to research what are the, you know, uh, what's the financial aid like in this institution? How much institutional aid do they provide? Uh, are they generous with need-based aid? Do they provide, you know, uh, merit-based scholarships? These are all things that need to be researched ahead of time and found. A lot of students, you know, you know, fall in love with an institution uh, because of, you know, just the student uh, population, like the programs that they offer. And then once they see the tuition and realize, oh, wait, this school is not very generous, you know, or maybe I would be applying as an out of state student and I might not be getting, you know, enough scholarships. All of that, you know, needs to be researched ahead of time and needs to be known. Uh, so when it comes time to, you know, when you receive your financial aid award, if you get accepted, and you are not surprised, you know, or maybe if you do want to go to a school uh, that maybe is not quite generous with need based aid, uh, there there can be a plan, right? Let's say that you or your student wants to go to a school that is not generous or that, you know, maybe they don't they don't have good financial aid. Uh, there can be some planning ahead of time, you know, like uh, applying for scholarships, saving up uh, a plan that can help the students still attend that university. Uh, but know what they can do so that they can go to that university paying as little as possible. Because at the end of the day, uh, you know, we don't, you don't want to take out loans because um, too many loans, you know, can be, you know, that's what we want to avoid. So knowing these things ahead of time can help the student prepare better and, you know, avoid debt, which is what we want for you. All right, so oh, where did I go? Oh, there it is. Okay, so the third thing uh, that you should consider when applying to colleges, uh, you know, figuring out what college should you apply to or your student apply to is number three, colleges and universities that are generous, which I already talked about. Colleges that have good financial aid programs, colleges that have institutional aid what are what's institutional aid real quick we've talked about it in the past you know colleges that offer you know institutional scholarships whether they are merit based or need based um, so an institutional scholarship can be like a sports scholarship the one my brother david received uh, he received an institutional scholarship uh, an athletic institutional scholarship i received a theater scholarship because I did theater, that was my extracurricular. And I researched when I was looking for colleges, I specifically looked for schools that not that had good, uh, you know, all of my the programs that I wanted to do. But also, since I knew theater was something that I like, I looked for schools that offer theater scholarships. And that's how I stumbled upon Marist College, which is a private university, which, you know, there's this stigma that private, I mean, private college, I'm sorry, and there's a stigma that colleges are more expensive, um, which they can be, but they also had very good financial aid packages. And, you know, I checked the boxes when it came to, um, you know, meeting my my family's, my home's financial needs. Uh, Marist College was very generous, and I was really happy to see that 
when I first looked for it and when I applied, I was confident enough because I knew that it was a school that had a good financial financial aid packages. Um, I, you know, applied for a schol- I auditioned for a scholarship. So I was, you know, banking on receiving that scholarship, which I did. So it, it was all planned ahead of time. And that's what we teach our students in Basketology, right? We teach them to plan in advance, right? And to look for the opportunities that are right for them because that is what can help students, you know, can make the difference of going to college, getting accepted to a university and having to take out loans and, you know, having a lifetime of debt or just getting accepted to your dream college or a college that you're really happy about, uh, the right college for you with scholarships and financial aid. Uh, we have had a lot of students who have followed our methodology, who have follow, followed the steps that we took, and you know they have been successful. We had, we've had, thankfully, we've had a lot of success stories. Just last week uh, during a live stream, a parent told us that their student, uh, you know, was accepted to the University of Chicago, with a, which, by the way, is Chicago is a great school. Um, and, you know, they received a full ride, which is also amazing. So, you know, there is a way to get accepted into these amazing institutions. And there is a way to go to college paying less. It's all about understanding how the system works, looking for opportunities that are right for you and your students. And applying, right, uh, and applying those, that knowledge, uh, and, you know, just following the steps, creating a plan, etc. So those were the differences between colleges and universities. All right, that's everything that I have for you today. If you have any questions, let me know in the comment section below. Have an amazing day. Happy holidays. Um, if I don't see you again, and don't forget to join us tomorrow for our Instagram and TikTok live streams. Okay. If you want to, you can follow us on all of our social media. It's the handle is at Best College USA. And that's everything I have for you today. Happy holidays. This was College versus.